My name is Mike, this is Angela, and we are the... James family, and we have four kids. My oldest daughter, her name is Jaden James. She's eight years old. My second daughter, Amaya, she's five years old. We also have Michael, who's 20 months, and we have McKinley, and she is seven months. I'm going to my gym right now. I'm a professional basketball player. I play in the NBA with the uh, New Orleans Hornets. My preparation for the season is very vital to me. Mike spends most of the day training. So I'm going away from the family majority of the day. And then when I leave for the basketball season, I'm gone for six, seven months. This is new because usually when he leaves, I just pack the whole family up and we go where he is. This time, we're going to stay here. So it's new territory for me. So now, Angela's going to be the one that the majority of the time is going to have to deal with the kids. Jaden and also Amaya, they fight for my attention. They fight for their mother's attention. Stop! Michael, she's picking up both of their bad characteristics. No hitting. <laughs> the parent that gets the most respect from the kids would definitely be Mike. I'm going to share, period. Jay, that's enough. I guess because Angela's with them more, she tolerates more from them. Our biggest problem, major problem with our children is they're very active, they're very energetic. A big pool, and yet these kids are unsupervised. Got to think of safety. I'm a woman that wears many hats, I guess, like most women. OK, let me call you back. Children gone wild. Being an NBA wife, a mother of four, we have a new construction company. We formed two other new companies. And I'm the vice president, writing checks, drawing up contracts, and dealing with the accountants. I have a lot on my plate. Hi, Mommy. Stop it. Y'all better stop. I'm not playing with you. I'm feeling real chaotic right now. I would love to have time for myself. <laughs> This is when the, all the kids are hungry and start going crazy. No! We try to do a regular schedule, but we've got so many new things going on, it's hard to get a schedule. Hey, Mom, you know it's too late for dinner when they're falling asleep. Stop! Finally, it clicked. You're doing something wrong here, so I've got to figure it out. Mum's seriously stressed out here. There's just no way she can possibly take on it all. I need to help her. You only get one chance to raise your kids, and I want to do it right. Super Nanny, I would be so grateful for you to come into my home and help whip me into shape and my kids. Hang in there, Mum and Dad. I'm on my way. certainly a different scenario, me turning up to this house because they have electric gates and I'm fully aware that I'm arriving to help a family who are in the limelight. Hello. How are you? Hi, Joe Cross. Pleased to meet Hello. you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Mike James. And this is Hi. my family. Hello. Look at this little one here. This is McKinley. Hi, Hi McKinley. McKinley. And what's your name? Amaya. Hi, Amaya. Pleased to meet you. You're going to shake Dojo's hand. Hi, pleased to meet you. And is this your big sister here? Jaden. Hi, Jaden. Pleased to meet you. Jojo, how are you? Good. When Joe came, I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't want there to be any presumptions, you know, whether it's NBA family or I just didn't want her to assume. Hi, pleased to meet you. Oh, I love it. You're in for a good ride, aren't you, buddy? <laughs> yes. A nice little ride, a nice yeah. one. I also got a chance to meet the nanny, too. Hi, Nanny V, right? Yeah, nanny okay. V. Nanny Jo. <laughs> nanny Jo. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Hi. you. Too. Growing up, I, I didn't have a nanny, and so I'm just used to doing it without much assistance. But you burn the candle at both ends of the stick, and it's not healthy. We'll do the Buckingham Palace tour, shall we? The first thing I did was to look around the property, because it's very large, and I wanted to get an essence of really where everybody spends their time. 
So my profession is being a ball player, so why not have my gym in my backyard? Yeah, for real. So I can do my all my training. This is McKinley's room, but I want to put um, Michael and McKinley in this room, so Michael would sleep there and McKinley would sleep there. Right, okay, so eventually you're going to have both kids in, the in this room, room, the youngest mm -hmm. ones, but at the moment you just have... Nobody up here. Oh, right, okay, nobody. <laughs> right, okay, so it's all set up, but nobody's in here. <laughs> all right, okay. Okay, Maya, this is your room, is that right? Okay, so are you, do you sleep in your room then? No, not yet. Oh, okay, so no one sleeps in their rooms. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Where do they all sleep? They do sleep in the playroom. They all sleep in the playroom. All right, we'll get to the playroom yeah. with them, will we? So even yeah. though they have beautiful rooms that are ready for them to go into, they all sleep together in one tiny playroom. And this is where they hang out and sleep and do everything. So all of them are here at the moment? Michael, Jaden, and Amaya. Right, OK. And obviously the little ones in your room. Yeah. After everybody had settled for a little bit, Dad went off to the basketball courts to practice. I'll see y'all later. Love you. And Mum went into her office to sort out some business and take care of the kids as well. Don't put any tape on our mouth, baby. Sorry, Christine. Maya, don't climb up there. You know better. Now I'm confused. I'm on. I'm in the company file. OK. And it's just these two, so we're good on the foundation. We're good on the basketball experience. Michael, get down. So are you, are you trying to do business and you're the kids? Uh-huh. <laughs> this is what it's like for you all the time. Yeah. <laughs> they're OK right now, because I know they're going to look at the books and just, I can see them. <laughs> OK, and now I'm going to go back to open or restore company. Hey, oh, oh sorry, Christine. No, no, don't play with that. After Mum had finished doing her business in the office, she actually had a bit of a shock because she couldn't find Jaden. Where is Jaden? Jaden? You know where Jaden is? Mm-mm. Am I at work? It turns out that the nanny thought that Mum was looking after Jaden, and so neither knew where she was. And they actually live on a really large property with a swimming pool that's not protected or alarmed. So it's a very scary, dangerous situation. The kids are in the office. Mike's nowhere to be seen. The nanny is over here. I mean, what's going on? Oh, no, Jaden. Do you know where Jaden is? Mm-mm. So I'm here working with NBA basketball player Mike James and his family. Mum doesn't know where Jaden is, neither does the nanny. Miss Valda, did you see Jaden? No. Nobody knows where she is, and we're on a property that's extremely large with a swimming pool that's not protected. yourself doing the old walk oh yeah around the house trying to find oh yeah usually she's here yeah she's good Jaden you're fine you just need to make sure you let me know you're down here because I didn't know where you were there needs to be more communication of who's got the kids and where are they right now so sometimes the, the girls, the, they'll go off because this is all their home. Yeah. And then you're left going, where are the, where are the girls? Yeah. And that worries you. Yeah. Because you, you, haven't, you don't know where they are. I don't like it when they do that. Because then you, you're sitting down Mommy, at your desk I'm for two hours and you look ground. up and somebody right. snatch your kids. And I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. The whole family have a long day ahead. There's lots to be done. And there's no schedule. There's no structure in this house that supports the pair of them to keep them on the same page. So really, who knows what they're doing? So there's no, it, there's no real set kind of routine? Um, I usually do have them in bed by 8.30, between 8.30 and 9. And what, they, all of them? No. Oh, oh just two. the oldest two have to go to school. When they get four and having to go to real school, then I make sure. These kids go to bed far too late because these kids need at least 10 hours and they're not getting it. Come on. So you're taking the kids up to bed now? Yeah, we're just going to hang out in the playroom, which is where they sleep, so. The family live in a really huge house, and all the girls have beautifully decorated rooms. However, they all sleep in this really small room. Where's your blanket? 
I grew up with a very big family, so it's not uncommon, especially in smaller homes with larger families, that everybody just slept in the bed, so it was quite natural, really. What y'all doing? I'm just getting them down the bed. Dad did come back from the basketball court six and a half hours later, and I really wanted to see how he was going to put the kids to bed. I want a kiss. Mm, I want a kiss. I don't particularly feel that the family recognised the importance of creating a calm environment for the body to be able to unwind and get into the sleep mode. OK, time for bed now. No more Come games. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Grab this one. Stop, stop, Jay. And then they get in bed, and the parents kind of scratch their heads, wondering why the children are not going to sleep yet, and they have to keep going into the room. Yeah? Who? Get your in bed. You just stop playing with me. Don't play with me. I watched Dad put the kids to bed, and after that, I wanted to sit down and talk to him about his take on bedtime and really what he thought about it. So is it equally important to yourself as it is to Angela to have the kids sleeping in their own rooms and having a bedtime routine? I don't care. It's not that important. You know, this, this is not about Mike James and his universe. You know, this is about him acknowledging also the people that have supported him and him becoming the success that he is. So what challenges do you think Angela's going to address whilst you're gone? Being away from me. That's our that's biggest challenge. How does it make you feel when you know that your wife's tired and, and she's depleted? One thing I learned is, especially in this world, first, it ain't no rest for the weary. I'm, I'm tired I'm, and depleted yeah, also. I I'm tired, of, but you know what? I'm tired of getting up every single morning, 7.30 I'm in the asking, morning. But I'm asking you about your wife. But I'm just wife. saying, though, but what I'm trying to explain to you is I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do on the court. She has to do what she has to do as far as with the business, with the finance, everything else. He became rather combative with me. It was just really uncordial to really behave that way when you've only just met somebody. So I see more than what you have seen in the past 24 hours, not even 24 hours, but and come to a conclusion on a situation less than 12 hours. I'm about to show you how I can. Bull crap. I refuse to believe that. It's always easier to deal with somebody else's children. But until you have your own, oh, you will that's, never that's very arrogant. Oh, no, it's that's not. It's arrogant. not. It's a true. You're not even giving me a chance. You're not even giving me a chance. This is what I find amazing, that you actually had the... I'm giving you a chance. You actually had the control I'm to make a, a decision chance. to have me come yeah. here. And I'm appreciating you being here. You can't come to a better assessment about my family than I can. You can't. To help and resolve the situations, that's exactly what I am going to do, otherwise I won't be here. OK, I ain't got nothing to say. I'm going to keep... OK. You know what you can do? I'm listening. You can trust me. I'm going to listen to you, and I'll come to that assessment for myself when I listen to you. When you're trying to come into my family, and now, after a few hours, try to tell me how I'm supposed to be with my family, it's almost like, hold on. So tomorrow, mm -hmm. we'll have a nice family meeting, okay. all right? We'll sit down, we'll talk about what needs to, to be addressed, mm -hmm. all right, so that we can knuckle down and do some hard work. So I'll see you Hope tomorrow. Enough. I'll see you tomorrow. OK. Good night. His statement is pretty typical of a parent who feels rather defensive and insecure about my presence in their household. I just hope that Mike starts to grow some empathy towards his wife's situation. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. You're welcome. Thank you. Let's start off with this family meeting. What I'd like to do is to go through the issues that I feel need to be addressed. Have you gone through, like, the safety of the house with regards to, you know, the areas that you really want them to not be in at the moment, places where they can't, they need supervising? Do you have a pool? Do you have, like, a safety alarm in there? Like, what, what do you have? Because the house is big and it doesn't take long 
for fatal accidents to happen in the swimming pool. Michael, she she's the only one right now. That and we worry about. But she wouldn't be able to get outside unless there's a reason for her being outside. No, she can open that door by herself. Right, okay, so I think what we need to really think about is being able to have a conversation with the kids about safety, about no zone areas, supervision, safety with the pool, is prevention. Yeah. The thing that I want to talk about is the bedtime routine. There is a bedtime routine in the sense that I try to get the girls in bed, you know, by 8.30, at least the, the older two, because they have school. I, I try to put the 20-month-old in the bed with the older two, but she's just hadn't been ready for that. But you want her ready for it? Yes. I want all four of them in the bed, 8, 8.30, downtime, sleep. She's more than ready for it. She's just pulling the leg that's got bells on right now. OK. She's doing that. You're aware of that though, right, Mike? Of course. Yeah. OK, so explain to me why is it not a priority? Because I know it is for yourself. It is a priority because she has to deal with it. She's the one that puts them in bed the most of the time. So she has to deal with them, so of course it's a priority. I would certainly say making the bedrooms more personal to the girls by having little things up there that they're familiar with will allow them to feel quite snuggy bug up in their bedrooms. And if one added, for example, some fairy lights or something that mm -hmm. they liked. So, you know, there's lots of things you I can do. I don't think that a light is going to make a difference. It's just all we have to do is now just convince them now why this is where they need to be because they need to start sleeping in their bedrooms and I think it's going to be all right. I don't think that that light... This, this house is it's quite a big house. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of space between... But I understand everybody. the personalization of the rooms. Okay. I respect that. I have nothing to say. You're right. So it's important that we get things into practice and that we have things running. And as you know, the James family are a team, and not one player is above his team. Right, Mike? You got to have a point guard and a captain, though. <laughs> got to have a team leader. God, I tell you I'm what, joking. I want to spend half this day <laughs> chipping out of his ego, aren't I? <laughs> Seriously. I'm joking. I'm messing right. with you. But you know, you know what I'm saying, all right? You know, it takes a team. Yeah, not for that. One, right? two, three, two. One, two, three, team. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm here at the household of Mike James. He's going off to training camp very, very soon, and I don't have a lot of time to put things into place. So every second counts. This is yours for the office. When you've got four kids, you've got to be flexible when you're creating a schedule. Simple as that, really. You leave at 7.30 to get the girls to school at eight. 45 minutes that leaves for you to get all the kids up, all the kids dressed, all the kids washed. Bit of breakfast down them, of course. I better Before. get up at 6.30, okay? So, kids go till when? The girls go until three, but on three days they have after school activities and this is when Nanny V will come in. Looking at the list that Angela wrote shows me that this woman does need a schedule just to utilize her time. I'm all done with my board. Good for you, go and play in your office. Got gotcha. That's a good piece of work there, Angela. Now that mum's on schedule, I have a little something for dad. We're gonna let Mike take care of the girls, all four of them, by himself for about an hour. So you get me time. OK. Mike had mentioned to me in quite a hostile way that he did have empathy. He did know what his wife was feeling. He understood everything. How could he not? So I thought, let's have Mike live a day in the life of Angela and four kids. There is an instructor waiting in the gym for you to do some yoga. Oh, OK. <laughs> I was curious to see how it would play out. Because he deals with the older kids, but he never really gets time to spend alone with all four of the girls at the same time. It's not as easy as I make it look, just like his job. When I told that about it, he wasn't enthusiastic at all. You're going to look after the kids and take care of them for an hour. Do we have to stay here? No, where are you thinking of going? Take them somewhere to go play video games, take the girls. Yeah, that would be too easy. <laughs> it's just a little tough especially for me to have a stranger come in 
And I also don't like being pressed a certain way and pushed a certain way. He had the opportunity to play with them on the swing set. Jaden was on the swing and knocked Michael over. And there you go. Oh, hey, Cheers. Jayden, Fortunately, Michael wasn't hurt, and Dad calmed her down, and she was absolutely fine. But Michael wasn't done yet. Oof. Oof. I think McKinley got some duty in her booty. Angela. Dad took McKinley inside to change her, and she started squirming around. And I actually just told Dad a useful piece of information. But he got really defensive with me. Mike might always wipe from front to back so she don't get no infection. This is my fourth daughter. Please, got this right here, baby. All right, good. Will you lay down? Yo, why do you feel? Get your little. Daddy, can we go swimming? You know what? Let me think about this one, Jay. Uh, no. Uh, no. I really couldn't believe that these girls were asking to go into that large swimming pool with their daddy on his last day. And he didn't care about what they wanted to do. He was really putting up a fight. Amaya, find a movie. My yeah, movie's later. Well, we want to sit down and watch a movie. Well, that's easy for you. And uh, no, my no. point is? And my point is, Jaden wants to do something. Jay, what you want to do, Jay? You want to go swimming? Yeah. I got McKinley. Who's going to watch McKinley? And who's going to watch Michael? OK, we're going to watch a movie. Who wants to watch a movie? Say, yay! Who wants to go swimming? Yeah. Oh, come on. Let him go swimming. Let him go swimming with Daddy. I felt so sorry for the girls. It was like pulling teeth to get Dad to do something that these girls just wanted to do with their dad before he went away for such a long time. Come on, let's go to the water. Let me see how long you can stay underwater. You ready? Go. I mean, in the end, Dad was happy to be spending time with the girls, and he really got involved with it. But he was happy when he saw Angela's face. Hey, hey, baby. He kind of mentioned to me there was some hiccups so he's like, man. <laughs> it wasn't very long, but it was long enough to say, OK, this isn't so easy. I'm learning, and I'm giving more of me. And I'm allowing myself to just accept the situation and not just deal with it, but enjoy it. Mike got to see exactly how difficult it is looking after four children. And now he's not so moody, I'm going to talk about safety. All right, main house, pool guest house and basketball court and playground. All right, let's make it clear to the girls when they can go into certain areas and when they can't, when it's off boundaries, all right? So they know and they start to learn. It's important you guys know, that way you're kept safe and you know what you can and can't do. But you just can't go in the office. So let's circle it off and then put an, an X next to no. it. The gentleman's room upstairs. Yeah. Gentleman's room, OK. Gentleman's room off bounds, OK. The pool area, all right? Off limits, off limits. So after going through the map of the house, I wanted to go through the pool safety. First, we started off by putting alarms on the doors that lead out to the pool. Ready? And then I took the whole family out to show them something I had bought especially for the pool. There is an alarm in this pool. If a child did fall into that pool, there would be an alarm that would go off that would notify you like that, OK? Because parents always say, it was just, they were here just one minute. They, they, they were here, they were here a second ago. But it wasn't no second ago. And what you're going to show, Mike, is that alarm, OK? You're going to jump into the pool now and show these kids that alarm going off. When she introduced Mike as far as him showing the girls this is what happens if someone falls in the pool. We didn't expect that. He didn't expect it. Jay, you want to go swimming? All right, in we go, Dad. Show the kids. 
Come on, baby. Daddy, daddy. Baby, daddy. just jump right there. The kids were eager for Dad to do it, and he started to dip his toes in the water, and oh, I don't know whether I should do it. I thought, oh, I'll just get in. Look at Dad. They're looking up to you. They're wrong, my God. Oh, no. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Mike had a really good opportunity to show his lighter side, but then he walked off. I mean, what's with that? Mike, 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 Mike! I thought I'd dry off. Dude, come here for a minute! And it created a very hostile situation. So he storms off, and I've only got a couple of hours left with Mike. I mean, does he really want this? Come on, baby girls. It's time for bed. So, Mike, I'd like to do this thing with the kids and putting them to bed in their bedrooms. Is that...? Let me ask you a question. Y'all want to stay in your bed tonight? Huh? You want to stay in your bed? What about Can you, we... Jack? I hope he realises this isn't about what Mike always wants. This is about responding to what his kids want and meeting those needs. You see how my child treats me? I'm you see, but hold on, but hold on. I'm not though. talking in front of the kids. But what I'm trying to say is this I'm not right talking here, in front of the kids. We can go back over here then. But do you see how... I'm not but do you see how my kids get me? Do you see how my I'm children get me? I'm not talking in front of the kids, Mike. It's disrespectful. Yeah. This is not adult well, conversation. Then I don't want to talk about you. Let me explain something to you, though. Please. You see how my child treats me? I'm you see, but hold on, but hold on. I'm not talking in front of the kids. What I'm trying to say is this I'm not right talking here, in front we can of the go kids. Back over here, then. Ideally, what I wanted to do was to teach them how to sleep into their own beds, but Mike wants to do it his way. And he's doing it in a really aggressive manner. That's not necessary. What do you think I'm trying to do? I'm trying to motivate my children to stay in their bedroom right now. I've got something nice for them. Jaden's scared about going in her room. What, you want to give her Mike, a teddy bear? No one can tell you anything. You want to give her a teddy You're bear? You're always right, Mike. And you I... always right. Mike. How come you always get to be right? How come you right? How come your two plus two always got to equal four? And nobody else know how to do math? You asked me to come in here to help you. You asked me to come and help okay. you. You know what's funny, though? Ever since you've been here, you judged me. What did you say about me earlier? I got an ego this big. Yeah. I got an ego. You don't even know me. Be a little bit humble. Let me explain something to you. I'm probably one of the most humble people you'll ever meet, but you know what? Stop trying to control That's everything. That's not me. It's all I control. Stop trying to control. I'm listening. You asked me here to help you. And I'm listening. Let me do my job. I'm listening. Stop saying that. Just do what you got to do. I'm listening. I'm all ears. And I'm listening. Okay. Let's do it. All right, good. I hope Mike realised that this is not about what he wants all the time. This is about understanding what his children would like and what would help them. Tonight you're going to sleep in your own bedrooms, but this is what I feel would be a really good idea. What I want you to do is to collect some of those things that you really like, like your cuddlies and stuff like that, OK? And then Jojo's got this, Christmas lights like fairy lights. So we'll put them in your room, OK, so that it'll be cosy for you. Y'all ready to go to bed now? Yes. Come on. It wasn't about trying to be in a battle or trying not to see eye to eye. It's just that you have to see from my point of view also. Give me a kiss. Daddy. I love you. Everyone can always think that okay, I put up guards. They think that I'm trying to fight something. But at the end, I'm just being myself, and I crack jokes. I love to have fun. You're a big girl. Come on. Come on, Mike, Mike. And you got, look at the lights, though. The lights are crazy cool, That's right? That's cool, yeah. I know Mike's really going to miss his girls when he's gone, so I want to give him a way to be able to reach out to them whilst he's gone for so long. This is what I do with some businessmen that go away, right? They literally record the stories, and then, like, it's a surprise for the kids. Because when they don't see you, they like listen to the DVD and it's like his daddy's voice telling them a story. So if you find the time tonight and you want to do a couple of stories, even though you're not physically here, you are here because they're hearing your voice. That'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be comforting for them as well. This is a very important, you know, situation because it can help me be a better husband, be a better father. I think that what she's doing is great. I think that she, she does a good job. She's, she's a professional at this. She's an expert. I've given the family time to be alone before Mike leaves. 
I'm just hoping that he's going to find the time to take these stories for the girls. But I don't know if he will. Hi! Hello! Mike had already left the training camp when I arrived, so now my concentration is purely on Mum. But I want to find out how these kids slept in their beds. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you? You did? Give me food! Sleeping in my room is really fun because when I wake up, I have a good sleep. Well done! That's fabulous, Angela. Oh, yeah. That's great! I was walking around, I didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I am really looking forward to these girls watching the tapes tonight. But first, I need to teach Mum the basics. So, come over with me. I taught her how to follow through with discipline. All the idle threats are hot air. Mm -hmm. How to give a proper warning. Come down to the child's height and use eye contact. Anything towering is intimidating. <laughs> and how to set up a realistic bedtime schedule. So at 7.30, you start that whole process. What comes first? Quiet time. Quiet time, exactly. And go settled. And before I left for the evening, I had a wonderful surprise to give to these girls for their dad's first night away. So I have a DVD here that is very special. Play. Hey, baby girls. I love you. You know I wish I was there to see you while you go to bed. And what a result. Dad had taped the stories just like I'd asked him so these girls could watch that. So here go one. You ready? It's called The King of the Birds. A bear and a wolf were walking together in the woods. Amaya, Jaden, and Michael were kind of like looking at the screen like, that's Daddy, he's reading us a story. And they were really excited. That is the king of the birds, said the wolf. We must treat him with great respect. But it was bittersweet for them as well, because it reminded them of how much they do miss Dad and how difficult it is for this family, because Mike is away so often. Moral of the story, baby. Don't be greedy. Be thankful for everything you have in life and make the best of that situation. I love you, baby girls. I love you. Enjoy, Jaden. It was good, actually. I started crying because I missed him so much. Even though it's sad, it's cool. It's cool that Daddy's doing that, right? It's OK to feel sad. It's OK to cry. It's OK. She just burst into tears, and my heart just pulled. I am gone for several days. Okay. If you don't get this down, you're going to become more overwhelmed. It's going to be stressful. When Joe leaves, I don't want to go backwards. You know what I mean? Like, it's as much painstaking for me to have change as it is for the kids. The supervision is going to be crucial because that's all about safety. Yep, got it. It's crucial that Angela implement everything she's been taught if she wants to succeed whilst Mike's gone. One of the things that I noticed was that McKinley was forever on Mum's hip. Come on, wait. So it was important for me to teach Mum just to let that baby go. McKinley! Tummy time! Look at this, look! McKinley must have thought, wow, great, I've got floor space, let's go for it. And she just darted across. What's she doing? <laughs> She's crawling. McKinley was like a little wound up baby on a cartoon, you know, she's like, uh, 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 and then she went like this. She went really, really fast. And Mum was like, is that McKinley? Go by it by the door and then take this ring. Okay. Let her come and get it. So you go and see Mummy get the ring. I was very stunned at how fast McKinley took off. And I'd seen her crawl a little bit, but not that fast. So McKinley being put on the floor and having tummy time <laughs> allows her to strengthen her neck muscles and her forearms here that prop her up that start the development of her crawling. Yeah. 
when she was young, she'd only see a couple of inches in front. Now, all of a sudden, she's having to focus. So her visual tracking is important. Come here, baby. <laughs> keep her attention, keep her attention. McKinley. McKinley is really ready to take the next step, and being on my hip was a hindrance more than it was a help. But in my eyes, her being on my hip was a sign of me loving her. But now I know I can put her down and love her also. Was that fun? Want to cross some more? Come with Mummy because Mummy's got something to show you. <laughs> Come on. The kids had watched Dad do the video stories, but I wanted to give them another thing to make them feel like they were connecting more with Dad. So I took them into Mum's business room so that they could communicate with him via the webcam. <laughs> hey, baby. See, look, Daddy can see what's in that box. Daddy. You know, they were so excited. They were all trying to talk over each other. I was breaking out of sweat. I was like, hold on a minute. Calm down so Daddy can hear you. I love you. I love you. Don't move yet. For them to see him on the other side in real time, oh, they were amazed. I mean, you could hear them screaming and Michael, like they all wanted a piece of him. Yeah. Mum, in order for this to Don't work really efficiently, yeah. so that both of you are not yeah. frustrated, yeah. OK? is that you want to get the girls to speak one at a time. So you'll have to instill that with the girls when you're sitting down. Dad! That's beautiful. It's for you. Oh, thank you. You know what I said to myself when I saw him on the webcam? I said, OK, I can do this. I can be away from him and not feel so far apart. It, it was a different kind of connection. Yeah. OK, thank you, Lisa. I love you. I love you, too. Bye. to leave because you don't need me anymore now, right? Right. Mum has been very open. She's been very receptive to learning. And for me, that's important because Angela is left to hold the fault with the family. I know that she can certainly be that backbone for when Mike's not around. Jojo! Jojo! I've made a lot of strides. I've taken everything that I've learned, no matter how big or how small, and making them my own. Bye, bye darling. Yeah, bye bye. Aww. Aww, bye bye. <laughs> Look at her rubbing all on you. Aww. Hey, Angela, take care. Thank you so right. much. You're more than welcome. Mm. Send my love to Mike. Mike and Joe, with their special relationship, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> I am proud to see the transition, and I'm grateful for that and I'm going to continue to take steps forward. Underneath the hard exterior is a very sensitive man, you know, and he's a man who's on top of his game professionally, and all I would want for that man is to be on top of his game personally. Thank you. OK, bye-bye, sweetie. Bye, Jojo. Bye-bye, darling. Bye. <laughs>